بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم. This video is about the limit as n tends to infinity of the sum k from 1 to n gamma k over n to the minus k. The gamma function gamma of z is equal to 1 when z is equal to 1. Gamma of 2 is also equal to 1. The gamma function has a minimum on the interval between 1 and 2. The minimum is about 0 0.8856, which is greater than 3 fourth. For every positive z, gamma of z is strictly greater than 3 over 4. 1 over gamma of z is strictly smaller than 4 over 3. Gamma of x plus 1 is equal to x gamma of x. If we take the reciprocal of both sides, we get that 1 over gamma x plus 1 is equal to 1 over x gamma of x. 1 over gamma of x is equal to x times 1 over gamma of x plus 1. And this is less than 4 over 3. For every positive x, 1 over gamma of x is strictly smaller than 4x over 3. To study this limit here, we divide the sum into a sum k from 1 to the floor of 2n over 3. And another sum k is from the ceiling of 2n over 3 all the way to n. We show that this summation tends to 0 as n tends to infinity. The limit here depends on the terms with k from the ceiling of 2n over 3 to n. To show that this sum tends to 0 as n tends to infinity, we make use of the function g of x, which is equal to x to the power 3nx over 4. x is positive and is less than or equal to 8 over 9. The first derivative of function g of x is 3n over 4 g of x itself times 1 plus log x. This bracket is 0 when x is equal to e to the minus 1. If x is less, the bracket is negative. If x is more, the bracket is positive. So the function decreases, reaches a minimum at x equal to e to the minus 1, then strictly increases. Suppose that the value of x is restricted to this interval from 8 over 3n to 8 over 9. When x is 8 over 3n, g of x is 8 over 3n to the power 8 over 3n times 3n over 4. This value is 8 over 3n squared. That's 64 over 9n squared. 8 over 3n is less than e to the minus 1 when n is greater than or equal to 8. So the function starting from this value decreases to its minimum at e to the minus 1. Then it increases again to the value 8 over 9 to the power 8 over 9 times 3n over 4. This is 8 over 9 to the power 2n over 3. For this range of values, the function g of x is upper bounded by the maximum of these two values at the end points of this interval. Now let's take the sum. k is from 1 to the floor of 2n over 3. To upper bound the summand, we use this inequality here. Gamma of k over n to the minus 1 is upper bounded by 4 over 3 times k over n. Then we raise this to the power k. When k is 1, we have 4 over 3n, which tends to 0 as n tends to infinity. Now the index of the sum is from 2 to the floor of 2n over 3. Note that the summand can be written in terms of this g function. Specifically, we have g of 4k over 3n. When k is equal to 2, the argument of the g function is 8 over 3n. If k is the floor of 2n over 3, then this argument is upper bounded by 8 over 9. We upper bound the sum by an upper bound on the number of terms in the sum, which is 2n over 3 times the maximum here, whether the maximum is this term, which is a positive number over n squared, or that term, which is a number strictly less than 1 to the power 2n over 3. This maximum times 2n over 3 approaches 0 as n tends to infinity. This is a non-negative sum. It's upper bounded by a quantity that tends to 0 as n tends to infinity. So this summation tends to 0 as n tends to infinity. The limit of interest depends on the sum starting from the ceiling of 2n over 3 to n. What we do here is to replace k by n minus k. So we have gamma of n minus k over n to the power minus n minus k. The argument of the gamma function is 1 minus k over n, which is in the range from 0 to 1 third. We need bounds on the function log gamma of 1 minus x with x between 0 and 1 third. We obtain the bounds via the second degree Taylor polynomial log gamma of 1 minus x when differentiated once with respect to x yields minus, because of this minus sign here, di gamma of 1 minus x, and the di gamma function is the logarithmic derivative of the gamma function. If we differentiate again, we get plus 1 times the tri gamma function. Log gamma of 1 minus x is equal to log gamma of 1 minus 0. Gamma of 1 is 1, and log 1 is 0, minus the first derivative evaluated at x equal to 0. That's minus di gamma of 1, 
and this is small gamma, Euler Mascaroni constant. Then we have this term, one half x squared times tri gamma of one minus zeta, and zeta is between zero and x. Tri gamma of z is summation, g from zero to infinity, one over g plus z squared. We think of z as a positive real number. Note that the tri gamma function is positive, and as z increases, tri gamma of z decreases. We can upper bound the tri gamma function by its value at 2 over 3. Tri gamma of 2 over 3 is this sum here with z replaced by 2 over 3. When g is 0, we have the term 9 over 4 plus this sum over positive integer g. We can upper bound the sum by ignoring this 2 over 3. The sum is zeta of 2, which is i squared over 6. Tri gamma of 2 over 3 is upper bounded by 4, which is greater than this sum here. Because this term is non-negative, log gamma of 1 minus x is between small gamma times x and small gamma times x plus 2x squared. Exponentiate all sides to get that gamma of 1 minus x is greater than or equal to e to the power small gamma x and is less than or equal to e to the power small gamma x plus 2x squared. Replace x by k over n. Take the reciprocal of all sides, then raise to the power n minus k. We have the summand between this lower bound and that upper bound. When we replace k by n minus k, originally k is between 2n over 3 to n. Now the new value of k is between 0 and n over 3. k over n is less than or equal to 1 over 3, which means that minus this bracket here is less than or equal to minus 2 over 3. This exponential is upper bounded by e to the minus 2 small gamma k over 3. We can write the sum over non-negative integer k and insert this indicator here that k is less than or equal to n over 3. The indicator is 1 if this condition is true, 0 otherwise. Can we take the limit inside? To justify this, we apply the dominated convergence theorem. We need to upper bound the magnitude of the summand by a quantity that does not depend on n. So here we make use of this upper bound, which depends only on k and not n. The indicator function is upper bounded by 1. The magnitude of the summand is upper bounded by this function, e to the minus 2 small gamma k over 3, which does not depend on the variable with respect to which we are taking the limit. Moreover, if we apply the sum over non-negative integer k to the upper bound, we get a finite result because this is a convergent geometric series. We can apply the dominated convergence theorem and swap the order of limit and infinite summation. We can take the limit inside. What is the limit of this function as n tends to infinity? We obtain it via the squeeze theorem. Both the lower and upper bounds tend to e to the minus small gamma k as n tends to infinity, because this fraction, this one and that one, tend to zero as n tends to infinity. Both bounds tend to this function of k, thereby indicating that as n tends to infinity, this function, gamma of one minus k over n to the power k minus n, tends to e to the minus small gamma times k. The indicator function itself, when we take the limit for any given k, sooner or later n over three exceeds k, and the indicator is equal to one. The limit as n tends to infinity of the summand is e to the minus small gamma k. This is a convergent geometric series. It is equal to 1 over 1 minus e to the minus small gamma. This is the value of the limit of interest.